Patton was not going to get his wish to drive on to Moscow. The divisions with lots of, uh, say, three years of war behind them were staying for the occupation. The third had suffered 25,000 casualties. Our stay in Austria was about done. We were getting ready to move up to Germany. The army was preparing its troops to send there from the European theater. The third infantry had suffered much and had done much combat. It was selected as one of the divisions to occupy Germany. Not long after we were in Austria, we packed up and headed for the area around Kassel, Germany, 385 miles. The headquarters for the 3rd Infantry was in Kassel, and the headquarters for the Division Artillery was in Melsum, and about 25 miles south of there. It took us two days to get up there. We made one stop. Melsungen is situated on a small river there. Headquarters battery was billeted in a vacated barracks of railroad workers. The various battalions were situated in towns in that particular area. One of the first things we did would be to raid the Germans to find out if they had saved any weapons which they were supposed to have turned in. However, if you look at the <laughs> picture of this town and look at those stories about four sto five stories high and remember that there are no elevators in them, after maybe an hour or two, this is soldiers who were doing the uh, raids were us all pooped out <laughs> and they were not all that eager to walk up another four or five flights of stairs so I'm not sure how uh, effective this was. We didn't find anything anyway. I was driving for the executive officer. As a driver I didn't have to do any of this raiding. He in my year in Germany, I never saw the general, but I saw his uh, gopher, who is a colonel, Colonel Coyne. And the, uh, but the entire rate, number of raids we did, we did another one later on, same results. It was so tiring walking up all these flights of stairs that I don't think the uh, raids were very effective. They never found anything anyway. Raiding these little towns for contraband was absolutely silly anyway. Here's a picture of Darmstadt, Berlin, Munich, Kassel, and all the towns were like this. There was no place to hide anyway, so they were so busy trying to keep body and soul together, they weren't interested in fighting the Americans who had no mercy anyway. You don't revolt against an, an occupier with just your bare hands. You've got to have weapons. And no one was giving the Germans any weapons. They turned all theirs in. So this uh, raiding these little towns was just a way of harassing the Germans, looks like to me. How I got the job as driver for the executive officer was that the other driver got drunk and, uh, or maybe he was just drinking too much. Anyway, he fired him and he, they, they gave me the job. The officer's quarters was at a big house up the hill from us at the end of a long driveway. When I, the first time I went to get the colonel, it was, I was driving a, 42 Buick. I went down this long driveway, picked him up, and we went out, we went back out this long, narrow dirt driveway with 
grass on each side. At the end of the driveway, there was a ditch under the culvert, obviously, but the ditch where I was going to make a right turn was uh, covered over with all this grass, and I didn't know there was a ditch there. I'd never been there before. Anyway, I made a right turn in my right rear wheel where the colonel was sitting right over it. It went way down into this ditch, and I guess he bounced against the ceiling coming down, and he says, Gudgel, if you can't do any better than that, I'm going to fire you. So, but anyway, uh, we got on good terms later on because I tried to drive like a limousine driver, I guess the drive, and I was very careful about not no quick stops, no short turns, and eventually he wanted me to become his orderly, but I preferred to stay with the troops, so to speak, as a radio operator. And this is the way I showed Robin how to drive. Put a glass of water on the floorboard, nearly full, and tell him to drive so you don't splash any water over the edge. He remembered that and told me about it and down. But I'm really sorry now, I never took his picture. In fact, I never took any of the officers' pictures, which is, I'm disappointed. I'd like to add a picture of Hatch. I'll tell you about him later. So for a certain amount of time, a few weeks, we were busy occupying the Germans. I'd drive the colonel to one battle, a battalion or another. Also, they were trying to get a handle on the DPs, the displaced persons. There were, of course, lots of slave labor used by the Germans, but they also were workers who came into Germany because they could get a job. Of course, German war factories were in all the countries they occupied, but uh, in Germany, in the DPs that we were trying to feed and house and get them back home, they were these workers that uh, had come for jobs there. As you know, there was just no transportation, no trains were running, no cars were running, there was no automobiles, there was no gasoline. I drove from Frankfurt to Castle and didn't see one car on the freeway. I don't think I even saw a military vehicle. Now this was into August maybe September, and even into October when I went to Berlin, I didn't see any automobiles on the road. How these people got their groceries, I have no idea. Neither did I see any trucks or trains or public transportation. I don't know how supplies got to them. Of course, there were some in America that wanted to starve all of them, all of Germany. Churchill wanted to gas the country until the uh, military reminded him that the Germans